Now we're going to bring in Rotowire senior golf writer Len Hochberg to chase or fade the golfers in the actual event, the Northern Trust. Okay, so Len, we last saw John Rahm a month ago when he finished T3 at the Open Championship. After testing positive for COVID again and sitting out the Olympics, Rom is back and in the field for the start of the FedEx Cup playoffs. But can you trust him is the question. So Chaser fade Rom as the most expensive golfer on the slate at 11,500. Yeah, Jesse, uh, you know, trusting John Rom, uh, yeah, I think we've come to, to see that no matter what, he, no matter what the roadblock, whatever comes his way, he is there. He can deliver almost every time. You're right. He have, we have not seen much of him lately. This will only be his fourth start in about two and a half months, but he won the U.S. Open. He was top 10 in Scotland. He was third at the Open Championship. Nothing seems to get in his way. 11.5 is actually a very nice price. I was looking back to last year at this tournament. Brooks Kepka was the top guy at $12,000. So if you want to look at it like that, John Rahm is a bargain. I don't know if he'll win. He really only has one win all year still. Uh, pretty good one, though. But he is one of the best birdie guys, and I think he usually outperforms uh, DraftKings prices, outperform his leaderboard position, and his leaderboard position is pretty good. He, he is a chase. Okay, Len, so Colin Morikawa leads the FedEx Cup standings heading into the first leg of the playoffs here. He's been really impressive all season, so no reason to think he can't keep it going in Jersey City, right? So chaser fade Morikawa at 10400 at the Northern Trust. Absolutely right, Jesse. Uh, I'm actually really surprised he's only the number five guy on the DraftKings board. Really, he... He and uh, John Rahm, they're the 1A and 1B golfers of the year right now. Um, I know the people who make the prices at DraftKings are a lot smarter than me, so they've got it all figured out. But I don't understand how he's not number two behind John Rahm. He is $1,100 cheaper than John Rahm. This course is made for him. It's a ball striker's course where we've seen that uh, less than stellar putting has not been too critical to uh, preventing success on this uh, you know, but I kind of think that a lot of people are going to be like me and say, wow, Colin Morikawa, $1,100 cheaper than John Rahm. There's going to be a lot of people on Morikawa, which may make it sense to pivot back to Rahm for uh, obviously a lot more uh, money, but uh, you might find some separation. He will not be as highly owned. That's, that's my feeling. But, but uh, Morikawa is a chase for sure. Okay, next up, let's take a look at Patrick Reed, who won here at Liberty National back in 2019. So chase or fade Patrick Reed this week? You know, it's interesting. When Patrick Reed won at this course two years ago, he was among the top 10 in driving distance, very un-Patrick Reed-like. He was about 20th in putting, very un-Patrick Reed-like. This is not a typical Patrick Reed course, I don't think. Um, so he, he did win in an unconventional way. He really has not been playing well of late. Uh, thankfully for him and for his backers, he took last week off at the Wyndham at the last minute. Otherwise, he'd be in a stretch of eight straight weeks. That's just too much. So he's got a little bit of a breather. But I think the $8,600 price reflects where Patrick Reed is right now. Uh, I'm a fade on Reed. All right, Len, who are some of the guys that you're just absolutely fading this week? You do not want them in your lineup. Yeah, some of the uh, the usual suspects that we've talked about uh, throughout the summer. Uh, Dustin Johnson, number two on the guy on the board. I don't see how that's possible. He's showing some signs lately with a couple of top tens, but he really has not contended uh, for a title all year. Um, you know, and secondly, um, you know, Justin Thomas, who has done virtually nothing since um, the winning the Players' Championship in March. This is a very good fit for Justin Thomas when he is on form, but I'm uh, not going to be ahead on that. I'll probably be behind. I'm going to stay away from Justin Thomas. And, and apologies, Br Bryson DeChambeau, uh, just too volatile for me. Um, you know, he, he has not played very well lately. Uh, he could win at any moment. We've seen it, but I'm going to stay away from him as well. All right, Len, how about some value that you're chasing? Somebody you think could just give you a nice, solid performance for not a lot of money. 
Yeah, I'll, well, I'll start at the nines. That's a, that's a bit of money, and, and I'll work, work my way down into the sixes kind of quickly. Hideki Matsuyama, $9,000. He's had a great summer, you know, the heartbreak at, in Tokyo, uh, but he did come close to a medal there. He lost in the playoff at the WGC. Uh, he actually missed the cut last week, which doesn't bother me. I, I like the fact that he... Uh, you know, got a little bit of a breather. This is a good course. A lot of guys uh, who who are great ball strikers, who are not the best putters, can thrive at Liberty Nat National. Hideki Matsuyama at the top of that list, $8,400. Adam Scott, I'm sure he'll be a popular pick. Good history here. He's won here. Played well last week, save for that one four-foot putt in the playoff. Mid sevens, a Keegan Bradley and Emiliano Grillo, great ball strikers, greens and regulation guys, bad around the green and on the green. I think it should get them through to the weekend. And two guys at $6,800, Chris Kirk, what a great year, continuing for him, comeback player of the year, uh, good chance of that. And a guy we talked about last week and have talked about a bunch, Roger Sloan, he was 6,700 last week. We suggested him. He made it all the way to the playoff at the Wyndham. Uh, he had made his way into the Northern Trust. I don't know if he can make his way to the BMW next week, but I like him, a good greens and regulation guy at 6,800. All right, finally, Len, it is slate approved pick time. So who is going to win the Northern Trust from Jersey City this week? You know, Jordan Spieth is the number three guy on the DraftKings board, and I think that's proper. He's 10 8. Uh, I think the number two guy was was a bit surprising to me, but I think J Jordan Spieth is just where he should be. He's really, you know, he's up to number 12 in the world. He's been great all summer since winning the Valero. He's got a third. He's got two runners up. He was great at the Open Championship very recently. What I really like about Jordan Spieth is that two years ago, when he was at the depths of his poor play, he tied for sixth in this tournament at Liberty National. So when he was really, really bad and playing wet, poorly everywhere, he played very well in this tournament. Now that he's back to being Jordan Spieth, I expect big things from Spieth this week.